Hello and welcome back to the part two of my Matek F41111 uh, flight controller review. This part we're going to be looking at building this into a frame and test flying it and getting it all soldered up. So it's a little bit of a guide of how to get started. Um, for those of you who haven't seen my previous one, I took out and did some range testing and I also just talked through the specifications. So I'll put a link up at the top to talk about that. Right, so where are we going to start? Well, first of all, you need your F41111 uh, flight controller. So um, I haven't actually done anything since our last video on that. Um, for those of you who watched my last uh, vlog, I think it was, um, my chameleon was written off pretty much. So um, I have had to get a new bottom plate for it. So uh, Armiton sent me that under warranty. Um, so I'm going to be rebuilding that drone. So I am going to be using... Um, the Speedex ES3030 uh, amp um, HV ESCs. Um, I'm going to be using a uh, Unify Pro Race Edition. I'm going to be using um, oomph motors and a 5 volt um, buzzer. So, also, sorry, uh, and an old Runcam uh, Swift Rotor Right Edition. So, this is all the stuff that I'm going to be connecting up to my frame. So, um, let's go through that. Right, so I've done some basic construction to the frame just so I can get an idea of spacing etc. Um, so I'm going to face the board the correct way round with the battery mount coming out the back, but I will be facing it well, the battery will be coming out of the front like I have on my original and what I did on my rooster build so I'll, I'll do that probably last. Um, I've run the cables out around the back and they're in the tubes, I'll cut these tubes down when I'm uh, near the end. Um, but first of all what we're going to do is we're going to solder up the pads that need to be, um, we're going to use today. Right so because we're soldering onto a flight controller I can get away with a bit higher temperature so I'm going to be working about 400 degrees. Um, I'm going to be using my normal solder that I use which is 6040 solder. Um, this is 0.8 millimeters. I will change to a different one but that's what I'm going to start with. So um, first of all what we're going to do is we're going to solder up um, all the pads and I'll talk you through the pads that we're going to solder as we go. As usual make sure you've got a, a something to clean the tip of your soldering iron. Make sure you've got your soldering iron nice and hot. So we're just going to work our way round clockwise. So we're going to heat up the pad. Make sure it's got a nice coating on it. Then we're going to do the um, signal wire. Right, so the last bit that this needs to be done is these with this row here, which is all of the um, camera and VTX power and signal. Apologies, had some problems filming and my big head kept on getting stuck in the way. So um, I thought I'd talk you through what needs to happen um, on here. So um, basically the main areas you need to solder are obviously the XT60 and you would solder that to these two points here. You would also run your cap between the two of these. You need to solder up your um, positive and ground wires for your ESCs and signal wire. If you have a ESC that has a signal wire that comes out of it, uh, sorry, a ground wire that comes out of it, you can solder that to the ground and join those together at the same place. Moving round, uh, T2 I chose for connecting my, the audio from my um, Unify Pro for smart audio. We need to configure that in, uh, in the VitaFlight software. Um, LED was soldered because I was tempted to put an LED on there but changed my mind. You then need to do ground, 5 volts and buzzer if you are planning to fit buzzer. My buzzer has a 5 volt power so I need to solder that together. Moving round, VBAT was soldered by accident and look how bad this is. I, this was me just taking the board out really quickly. Um, you need to do VTX and ground and you need to grab one of these 5 volt um, pads from over here because your Unify Pro or your video transmitter will need an input, 5 volts. They will need to have the video signal and they will need to have the ground. 
So that's the output going to your video transmitter. That would allow you to have OSD. Then you connect your 5 volt ground and camera. So your camera comes in here, the ground from the camera comes here, and the 5 volt comes in here. You can use this ground if you wish. I think it believes, I believe it has a common ground. And that is pretty much it for soldering this, uh, this up. So let's move on with the video. So I encountered a problem when I was putting this all together. The issue I had was that it wouldn't properly bind up and wouldn't work. While I could make it bind um, when I was testing last time, it actually wouldn't arm the quad and wouldn't actually properly work. So I could get connection, but it wouldn't actually arm. So I went onto Facebook and um, Samson from um, uh, Maytech um, jumped in and gave me some answers. So effectively, you need to download a specific target. Um, if you're not familiar what targets are, targets are the, the code that you pass over to the flight controller so it actually works. So it's a very specific target that you have to download. So I'll put the link in the description of what you need to do to get this. Um, but it did lose me a couple of hours trying to get this all working. So I'll put the link in the description and hopefully it will help you guys work your way around the problem. So once all that software was installed and everything was working, I took it down to the rugby club just to test it out. Fortunately, I didn't have very good visibility because uh, my goggles fucked up horribly when I was trying to fly this. So this flight is just me purely trying to make sure everything works as I expect it to do. So I'm not going to do anything particularly exciting. I just want to make sure that A, it flies, and B, that when I give it high power, it doesn't black out. Um, and that when I give it a pitch and yaw, that it's not going to do anything particularly odd or get a death spin or any of those sort of bits and pieces you can occasionally get. Now, I'm, as usual, like my uh, Matex, this doesn't disappoint me in terms of the way it handles. In fact, I think I prefer this out of the box um, than I do the, um, the F405 STD and OSD. It really is, it felt very um, locked in immediately in terms of how it um, performed. I, I don't know if it's the standard tune that it's got on it or anything like that. So um, yeah, I, I really think this is quite a nice um, flight controller. Um, from that perspective, I do think it has a few issues, which I'm going to go on to next. Okay, so let's get to the bit where I would explain why I wouldn't buy this product. Now, I've taken this out of my drone, um, and I'm just going to demonstrate why, I, why this product just infuriates me. Um, Obviously there was a technical challenge of getting the um, correct version of the software so it actually bound and worked properly, which I've explained already. Um, but the big issue here is this. So I'm just going to plug this in and I haven't got a transmitter on at this moment in time. So when I plug it in, I get this noise. This incredibly, incredibly loud noise. It drives me mad. Um, Basically, as soon as you switch on your controller and it binds, then, then it will shut up. But there is no way of turning it off. I cannot stop it. It is infuriating. Um, I can't get the buzzer to work correctly either. So while I think there's some really good things about this, it flies really, really well. Um, it's easy to work on. That one piece spoils this drone for me. Now, you could put a quieter buzzer on there, I fully admit. But that piece, I wish I could just turn it off. And that's why I have taken this out of my drone, because it annoyed me so much that I've had to do so. So it flies really well. It's really easy to work on. But that buzzing, that noise, if you've got a 5-volt buzzer, which is, for me, an essential part of my, my setup, because I don't want to lose my quad, it becomes the most irritating thing in the world. So great product. Maytech, as always, produce really great boards. But that last bit just drives me nuts. And that's all I've got to say. So I'll see you all next time.